<laughs> Welcome to another episode of A Fighting Chance. Episode 52, believe it or not. We made it to episode 50. Wait, I just said 52. Episode 51. We are here. We are here. We got uh we got my main man Sal here, of course, and we've got a special guest. We've got our good friend, Josh. Josh, I don't even know your last name, which is crazy. It's, but it's um funny. it's uh it looks like uh Montmini. It supposedly from what my dad told me it meant small mountain. What it's what a, is that? It's a French name. It's a, oh, it's a Canadian oh. name. Nice. Yeah. So that's where we get along with the ho- whole hockey thing, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Josh and I actually met through my Twitch channel and I, I play, I play music on there. I play a little guitar. Josh, how did you even find the channel? I don't even know if I've asked a you that. A little guitar. Okay. Jared is a very, very modest. Humble uh, guy. He is, he is the best Twitch guitar player um, when it comes to jamming out over songs. It's, it's not even comparable. For sure. That, I'm not trying how to ask you- for anything. Just straight up, straight <laughs> honesty. You. And the reason why I know this is because I was he searches. Yeah, I was I was dedicated to promoting my music for a while where um I did a recording all by myself. It was just me and an acoustic guitar, live performance at a studio, and I was trying to uh, promote my music by having other streamers play it and play on it and whatnot. That's still and, what you do. Uh, no, I don't actually. <laughs> no, I just go to your stream. You're the only person I don't do it anymore. I, I used to go. I used to go to all kinds of play, people's streams, like music streams. Really? Yeah, I have a song that I wrote about um, about uh, Chrono Trigger. Have you ever played that game? It's a Super Nintendo game style. It's a RPG game. Maybe I'm not super well versed on Nintendo. Okay, but- well, it's a really cool. It's like considered one of the best RPG games ever made. And I wrote a song about one of the characters. His name's Robo. And so it's a song about a robot, and uh, that's what Chrono is, Jared. Remember okay, Chronos? okay. So that song's about a character. It's about the guy named Robo. And anyways, I would go to like people playing Chrono uh, Trigger and go on their stream and be like, "Hey, have you ever heard? Uh, or would you like to hear a song I wrote about Cro- uh, Robo?" <laughs> and like every once in a while, they'd be like, "Yeah, totally," and they would just start playing my song on their stream. All so right, I've, but how many guitar players have you had jammed to this song? Um, like I want because you're, you're making me sound very special, like you know, talented. But how many people have actually jammed to your music? Um, I'd say like maybe uh, not a little less than twenty. A little less. <laughs> that's than actually 20. that's actually a pretty good amount, though. All right, yeah. I feel good. I feel good about this. Yeah, yeah. And then the um, well, the problem is, is I probably went through about a hundred or so. But the thing is, is that most people do the um where they play it like guitar hero nowadays yeah yeah the rocksmith yeah. thing yeah so it's i can't even like i don't my my music's not on that and it's not even really it doesn't even have a pulse to be honest you know i didn't I, <laughs> that's I, true I, that's very I, true i didn't record my music to uh, the click track and my, it's to josh's I, own rhythm yeah my natural timing is fucking weird so it really is <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i uh, so it's, it's very difficult. Even some of the people that like listen to it, they're like, uh, I don't even think I can, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, like, that's I, why half the time I just talk over it. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> just <laughs> playing one chord the whole time. Dude, no, I'm, I'm like, he's like, play. Like, literally, I'll, I'll be like sitting there l- talking over one of his songs. He's like, why aren't you playing to it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's a good time. And then I don't know how we even discovered that like you, that you grew up fighting and that you grew up. Oh, cause you not. tried to pick a fight between me and doom guy. <laughs> and and then there's, you, there's a ch- ch- chatter that uh, is like kind of weird and semi trolly. He's not like trolly to where it's like hurtful. He's just like, kind of just kind of weird. And, and his name said in that video, he acts like he's like, do like uh doctor doom. Like yes. that. Okay. <laughs> Like acts like the entire time does not break character while he's in the chat room, and so um, yeah, Jared tried to pick a fight between the two of us, and I uh, put a link in his chat uh, of me hitting a heavy bag, and um, that's when we got to the discussion of it all. But but didn't I pick? But did I put you in that fight because I had already known of your background of fighting, right? Yeah, maybe Cause, maybe it's because you talked talked about the podcast. Yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly yeah, sure. don't remember the timeline 
specifically. I just know that that happened. I just know that you tried to pick a fight between me and Doom, and that's nice. So, yeah. Jared, maybe so, yeah. this is your calling. You could do like Twitch promotions where you just do yeah. like, Twitch commenters. I would make love them to. fight each other. <laughs> yeah, make them fight. I don't yeah, know. but you got to create like the lore to it too. You you, you uh, instigated. All I know, I don't know. I have not gotten the opportunity to meet many of the people who follow me on Twitch. But based off of David's reaction of Josh hitting the heavy bag, I cannot put some of the people who hang out on my Twitch channel in a ring with Josh. Can David send this video? Did he Dude, still Josh, it? Josh, send it to Sal. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Drop uh, it in, or maybe how, maybe after, and then I can put it in. The... How am I sending yeah. it to you on the uh, through the email that you sent yeah. me? Yeah, if you can, if it's not a problem. Yeah, it won't take a second. It's it's on YouTube. Yeah, so. yeah drop it in now. Oh, okay, drop it perfect. In. Yeah. Um, I need but to yeah, see that, then I'd love to... Well, we'll see if Sal's even impressed. If he's impressed, then we'll have you tell us your background. <laughs> <in front. laughs> I've, seen, I've seen better. <laughs> if, if, Sal, if Sal's like, eh, then uh, you know what? We'll just go back to talking music and RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fucked up. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I curse? I don't know if you guys. Are yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You're go good. You're good. You're good. I'm pretty bad. At that. No, um, you're fine, man. I'm replying to you right now. The link. Nice. I said the right, link. Sal, yeah. This is the moment of truth. And build them up, man. I mean, if it if if it's that bad, yeah. make him make him. Yeah. Completely destroy me or completely gas me up one of the way. One of the two. Yeah. Right. Yeah, nothing there in the go. middle. Do 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 do. Jared, all I know is you're gonna be excited when you hear the recordings of like the band and I have like oh. really got some good stuff. Whoa. Oh heck. That was good. Okay. Dude. Here we go. Oh. You can keep the volume high so you can hear the bag. Yeah. Here we go. Here like the actual bag. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god. I'm impressed. So you don't want I'm very impressed. You don't I'm want none of that? That's 260. You just blast it on your face. Very impressed. Yeah, thank you, Sal. I like that right hook. It's nasty. My right hook? It's nasty. At, at a punch machine, just standing, yeah. delivering at 965, 970. Boom. No right. hips, nothing. Just straight right hand. Straight, just boom, straight. hook. Boom. My hook is gnarly. Can he yeah, crack, I mean, Sal? This guy. It's, it's this like, guy can crack. I don't know if. I don't know, Jerry, though. I heard. I South heard Paul have, Pereira. Uh, That's what they call me, South Paul Pereira, you know? Oh, oh wow. okay. You know, oh, wow. I heard Jared has a, a left hook. Ooh, I got some hooks. Can crack I for bit. sure got some hooks. But, okay. um, yeah. dude, that's how, when Emily and I first started dating, uh, Josh, we were going to kickboxing at a UFC gym for like the first six months of our relationship, five nights a week. And it was really a great way to start off our relationship. But, Ooh. um, yeah, dude, it was great. I thought you were going to say to hit your wife. <laughs> yeah, I was about to, <laughs> but. <laughs> but <laughs> no, there, I, I've heard a premeditated murder. I didn't know it was premeditated yeah. wife beating. Yeah, but, pre um, premeditated domestic abuse. They need to prepare you for domestic abuse. <laughs> so I started, I started telling Sal a little bit about, because you've told me that you you spar with you know you you have background of sparring with UFC guys you you I, you were telling me about your karate background and how you were you know you were really into that but dude walk us through walk us through the beginning of a young Josh getting into Josh to talk to, about getting, getting, it, nine getting years into old. battle getting I'm into battle nine years old and I think I started really like around eight so there's a lot to go through um, let's go through it just go through a little right. bit of it. All right, so I would say that, like, so, okay, I want to say my number one, what, all right, so when I was growing up, I was really into wrestling, like, professional wrestling, like, I thought it was the coolest thing when I was a little kid, and, um, you know, I was a big, like, Hulk Hogan fan, Ultimate Warrior, you know, that kind Logan of stuff, uh, uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, you know, those guys, yeah. um, so anyways, 
I was really into like, you know, the idea, the concept was just slamming things. I thought that was a cool concept. And um, so when I was about six or seven years old, I started playing American football and I was an offense and defense alignment. Uh, I was always the center and the nose guard. And um, when as soon as tackle became a thing, um, I got I think it's like four or five games into the season. I got um, uh, kicked out, out of the, out of the game because I power bombed a running back <laughs> um, because it's just that's what you do when they go really low. You know, you yeah. pick them up and you slam them down, you know, like what else are you going to do? And then I danced over them. I did a little dance <laughs> with my little fingers like this. That's what, at least that's what they told me. I don't even remember doing it, but I did a little <laughs> dance over and I got kicked off the, uh, out of, out of, the, out of that, um, game. And, um, I continued to play American football until I was a junior in high school and being offensive defense alignment, doing all the tackling drills, all the get up drills, all that stuff, like really helped with my overall grappling. You know, like you, I, cause I'm, I'm not the biggest dude. I'm only 5'11, 260. But back then I was like only 220 when I was in high school. And, you know, going against tackles, cause I was a defensive end, starting defensive end in varsity. I had to go up against the tackles that were 300 pounds. And Florida mm-hmm. don't fuck around when it comes to like how big and, and nasty football players mm-hmm. are in Florida. So mm-hmm. like, I, I had to do that all growing up. So that's like that part of it. But then karate, I started point. I, I was really into like um, like uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movies. I thought they were amazing. <laughs> Ever since I was a little kid, I thought it was like the coolest shit in the world. Yeah. And so um, when I got the opportunity to uh, do uh, karate, there was a uh, my dad's like, yeah, there's a guy that is in the, in the ta- in town because my dad didn't want to like take the extra time to like drive me somewhere like a good school or something he's like no there's a dude in town you know so i only have to drive five minutes to yeah. drop you off at this guy's house but the thing was is this guy was the number one point karate fighter in the state of florida and the state of florida is 28 million people so <laughs> it's a big place so if you're the best in florida you're you're pretty darn good so um but he had his own little school in his garage so it was just him his wife his training partner, which is this really tall karate point fighter dude, and then there he only had three kid students, which was me, a boy that was my age, and his sister, his younger sister. And so basically, like we would do katas maybe for like twenty minutes or so after doing a bunch of stretching, and then after that, it was sparring the whole time. So like most karate schools, like you go through technique and whatever, like a lot. Instead, us it was all about like getting our spacing down and our distancing and, you know, timing and all that shit and our flexibility really up. So I, I started a uh, training there and about within six months I competed in my first tournament. I got third at the Mike Green's open and the Mike Green's open is the one of the, if not the biggest, it's the second biggest uh, state championship in Florida. Um, so on, on my first tournament, I got third and I kind of got robbed. Um, so what happened was, is um, there's this one kid who was like the, you know, he was like the son of the main weapons guy, the guy that was like the coolest weapons guy there, like a fifth degree black belt or whatever. Anyways, his, he comes over to his to his son, and puts his arm around him and looks at the judges and gives him a little nod and then walks off. And then I go <laughs> immediately afterwards and go to uh, to spar with him or fight him for you know in the, in the tournament. It's just point karate, so it's not like a fight fight. But yeah. he just kept just like reaching out and touching me on the top of the head, and they would call that a point. And I was oh. like, that's not real technique. You have to hit with a real technique for it to be considered a point. Like that's how it's supposed to be. And so I was getting pissed because I was I was very fundamentalist when it came to this i was very serious about like what you're supposed to do i was stickler to the rules in that regard and um he went to do one of those stupid little baby karate chops on the top of my head and i replacement side kicked him you know when you like switch the feet i replacements and i was i was always a fat kid i was always like bigger than everybody and they so they laughed at me my first tournament they, like and then i started smoking everybody but this, they were laughing at me I went and replacement sidekick this kid and threw him onto the judges table. No shit. Not only did I throw him onto the judges table, 
and they docked me a point for a, a unnecessary like roughness or whatever, like over uh-huh. whatever it's called. They docked me a point. So he ended up winning, of you know, again, by like just touching me. I like came yeah. back. So I lost the point and then I won another two points. And then I stood, then he got like one more little touch on me. So he barely beat me by one point. So he really, I beat him by two points, really, if you think about it. And um, yeah. And so he moved on and then I won the uh, the next round between fourth and third. Because it was a, a single elimination where you then fight for the position down. But the crazy thing was my brother always hated me, always treated me like terribly. He, they had a, a film crew there and the local news was there. And somehow by the grace of God, my brother was watching the news and saw me replacement sidekick a kid onto a judge's table. And he was like, so we came, so when I, we, the, it was like a, it was like a 50 minute hour drive home. And I was just uh-huh. sulking the whole time because I lost that match. And yeah. when we got home, I was still sulking. I was still feeling like shit. And my brother like popped off as soon as he like, walked through the door. He's like, Josh, I saw you on the news. You fucking kicked the kid on the, this crazy thing. I can't believe you. I saw you kick the kid on the table. <laughs> and I just, no. and I just like sulkingly just said, I, I lost that match and then walked to my room and just sat in my room for the rest of the night pretty much. And how, how old are you at that point? I was like eight or nine years old. Oh like my that. gosh. Oh wow. Very young. Very yeah. Young. So that was the karate stuff. And I did that only for like, uh, I did that about a year, year and a half. Um, and I got third in my green open. And then I got uh, first in the U S open, which is called the U S open, but it's not like tennis where it's actually like a Nate national thing. It's, it's regional though. There was people that came from out of state to compete in it. It was a much bigger tournament. There was like, so it was a much more prestigious tournament. Um, yeah. And then I got second in some other tournament. I don't remember which one that one. And that guy really legitimately beat me. It was close, but he he beat me. But um, yeah, so like I was I was pretty good at that. And um, so I kept I, I stopped doing that though because my my mom said uh, it was either like because they were, they had to start paying for my pads. And my dad like made good money, but they were cheap as hell with me. They didn't like want to spend any money on me whatsoever. So they were like, all right, so it's either football or karate. And so because now I had to start paying for pads for football, I was like, all right, I guess I, I'm playing football because I really like doing that instead. So I kept doing that until the end of high school. Um, at the end of after high school, I uh, was kind of just all over the place. But then I started going to uh, – I visited – I um, first went to um, a friend's place in Miami and it's called freestyle fighting Academy. It's, it's, uh, run by the, uh, Avalons or something like that. I, f- I forget their last name, but they're the guys that, um, really promoted the Kimura trap system. Um, they're really big in the, um, in Naga, uh, especially in Florida. Um, mm-hmm. so I started learning jujitsu and Muay Thai then, um, when I was about, I think about 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. Um, then we went to, uh, but I was only there for a few months. Then, uh, we had, to, I went to move in with my wife, uh, in Orlando and I trained with some of the guys in, uh, in Orlando for uh, three or four months. Cause it was just during the summer. This is like two or three months. And then, uh, Everything got kind of put on hold when I went to the Navy. So I was in the Navy for uh, about a year. And then um, I had a, I got uh, discharged with a disability. So um, that just ended that whole thing. And I didn't get to train while I was there, sadly. They didn't have any programs. They didn't have anything. They didn't have boxing. They didn't have wrestling. They didn't have anything. Uh, yeah. so it's, it really sucked. You know, like an yeah. Army bases, Marine bases, they have all that shit. But Navy yeah, bases, seems- they- Seems like it should be pretty standard. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it should it should be, but it wasn't. Um they didn't even have fucking ping pong tables and supposedly that's like <laughs> standard on all ships. So like I was kind of I was fucking confused to be honest. Yeah, I've seen Forrest Gump. Um, <laughs> dude, y'all want me to keep going or y'all want to jump in uh, to ask questions or whatever? Dude, I want to know so have you so have you competed in MMA? Have you com- uh, like have you have you had in MMA? No, I did kickboxing match. I've done two you, 
uh, three kickboxing matches. Nice. I never did, then, a, never did an MMA fight. Have you done like a, a grappling grappling match? Uh, yeah, but uh, no, 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 not at not at a, a, a Naga or anything like that. Just uh, within schools, like where they do like a competitive uh, role. You know, like they do with uh, Tenth Planet. They have yeah, like yeah. House the, competitions. Yeah, I think that that's the comp. The combat jujitsu is pretty awesome. The Ten yeah. Planet does the Eddie Bravo stuff. I love the. I think that it's so much better because so much of ju- jujitsu you can't do if somebody's smacking you in the face. It's true. It's true. Oh, there it, <laughs> yeah. That reminds me, Mauricio. One of. What Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, like, I'm also. I also get really annoyed with people that um, don't like getting held down. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude. I'm winning. Like, you don't understand this. But if this is a real fight and I had my boys or it was just me, like, this, right. you're just, it's just over. You can't submit me and I'm on top of you. I'm blasting your face. I'm, if this is in the real world and it's concrete, I'm slamming your head off and up and off, off the concrete. It's, go, it's, it's done. It's a wrap. Okay. But tell so tell that to 10,000 people. Up, you know? <laughs> tell that to 10,000 people while they're booing you in an arena, though. <laughs> I know, right? Well, I understand that. Yeah, it's, it was, yeah. that's entertainment, though. That's entertainment. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about like you're in class and someone's yeah. like on top of you, just holding you down, and you can't get up and you can't submit them. That's your problem, not theirs. <laughs> it's time for you to learn how to get the fuck up. And that's right. another thing is a lot of people don't practice that. You know, when I started teaching, that was one of the things I really focused on. Was that was getting up. People need so, to learn. How to so, what were you gonna say though? I was just going to say uh, Mauricio won his fight this weekend. Oh, he fought yes. In, uh, in Dallas. For what? And, uh, what, but yeah, what, Mar- what, orga- what organization? For for Fury Fighting. Yeah. Uh, Big, it was on Fight Pass and everything. Uh, Mauricio is a guy. He's my jiu-jitsu coach, and he he uh, had his third pro fight this weekend. Nice. Got, nice. Got win, so, yeah. I Sal, see those, uh, those medals behind you. you what's up? I see the medals behind you. you. Yeah, yeah. I did. Dude, I need some medals. <laughs> I did two Naga and one New Breed. You got that a kick ass yeah. set of guitars behind you and a dope ass <laughs> purple light. Yeah. I know you can't <laughs> see it, but you're like in like the coolest setting. It's important yeah. that the blind guy has the. Has the I feel cool like it's a, it annoys me. Yeah. You're also like the handsomest, too. It's like the noise. It's kind of good, though. Right? Because then you don't have to like sit in the fucking mirror and stare at yourself all day long. You know? I still do it even though I can't see. It's crazy. <laughs> you, it. you just know I should I, be. I walk, I walk past mirrors. Jerry, like, what are you doing? You are the good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do, do do Josh? Do you miss training? It sounds like it sounds like. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I really do. One of the things is as you get older. It like your body starts aching a lot more. You don't heal as fast. So. I miss teaching. I miss teaching a lot because I was so I never competed at that at a high level, but I taught really high level people because yeah. I'm a very analytical person. And so I learned a lot through just mat time and uh, working with really high level people and studying a lot. Um, so I didn't have the, you know, all the extra concussions and um, experience that comes with, you know, ring time. But like, what a shame. I, I have a lot of experience in general. Like, so I've trained at probably at least 10 schools all over the country in Florida and Louisiana and Wisconsin and the Netherlands. Uh, now I'm in, in uh, Massachusetts, you know, so I've, I've, I've studied, you know, from a bunch of different people and a bunch of different systems. Um, You're a Celtics and, fan? Huh? You're a Celtics fan? Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not, not like a big team sports guy. Never been a big team sports guy. No, my brother is. And I hate my yeah. brother. So I, 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 <laughs> so I, I can't even, I can't even like them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. By default. You no. Know? Yeah. I just default. figured Massachusetts, you know, no, I just moved here like two years oh, ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just okay. moved here two years ago. So it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not even in like, it, it, it's actually the, the place I've lived the least other than Illinois. Like I lived in Illinois for only a year or so when I was in the Navy, but that that's it. That's the only other place I, I've lived such a short period of time is Massachusetts. And I, and honestly, I don't want to like, you know, disparage any like Massachusetts people out there or anything. 
but it's definitely not close to the top of my list of places to live. Um, the first year I lived here in the summer, I got a Lyme disease from a tick. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And I used to work Damn. with my dad as a tree. My dad was a tree guy. So oh. I used to drag brush through nasty, like high grass areas all the time in Florida. And then in Wisconsin, I was pretty like, you know, uh, and, and in Louisiana, I was pretty nature oriented, went on a lot of hikes and a lot of wildernesses, never no got ticks. a tick bite, no never ticks. got Lyme disease. Fucking one summer in Massachusetts, I get Lyme disease. So, so that's one thing I can say like, fuck Massachusetts for. Also, they have really terrible roads and driving habits. It's bad. Does the, is the Lyme <laughs> disease affecting you? Is that, is that something you like are dealing with and it's affecting you? No, it's not a constant thing. It was like when it happened, it was gnarly. Uh -huh. So like when I yeah. first had it, the infection, I had a fever over 104 degrees My and uh, there was no one to like help me out. So I had to like drive myself to the hospital and I had to like figure out like where I was going because <laughs> oh, like no. one place didn't take my insurance and they were like, no, you should go here. And I went to the other place and then there was a, a wait for like an hour and they did it. They didn't do it based off of like how much it was you needed to get helped. They based it off of who got there first. Oh, you there were people with like a fucking no, common cold you. in front of me in line while I had a uh -huh. hundred plus degree fever. So then I had to drive from there to the actual hospital where I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to the hospital. And then I walked in the hospital and they immediately was like, uh, what, what's going on with you? And I'm like, ah, I, I have a really, really high fever and I feel really faint right now. So I'm pretty messed up. And they're like, well, like, we'll go check your vitals. And they checked my vitals and it was over 104. It was like 104, six or something like that. So, so do they catch it early? Cause I've heard uh, the earlier that they catch it. I guess it's pretty early. I mean, it was already on like on set to where like uh -huh. I was already fighting it off. So it wasn't like super early. Like it wasn't like, Oh, I found the tick and I just removed the head and it's, I see a ring. So now I go to the doctor to get it fixed. Instead it was like, I, the t I didn't even know I had a tick. He already fell off. And I had this weird rash. It wasn't like a perfect bullseye. It was amorphous. So uh -huh. then I was like, oh, I don't know like what that even is. And then once I started having the crazy fever, I was like, I have to go to the doctor. I don't know what, oh, it, wow. what it is, but I have to go to the doctor because I might die. I don't know. Yeah. So I went, no joke. Yeah. So I went and did that and they, they hit me with uh, some, I don't know what it was, but some, some Advil Tylenol, something to knock the fever down. And it knocked it down right away and they hit me with an IV drip. And um, then I, th then the craziest part of this whole part story is that I never, so like I said, my parents never want to spend money on me. Like yeah. I don't want to put, I don't want to put them under the bus too much, especially <laughs> since my dad's dead. Yeah, you've already said you hate like, your brother. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, The whole family kind of sucks. I just want to throw it out there. But, um, yeah, so, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I don't put them on the bus too bad, but yeah, they just didn't like spending money on me for whatever reason. Um, you know, anyways, uh, I never got antibiotics in my own entire life, um, mm. for what, you know, in any scenario. So I went and, um, got a thing of antibiotics and I was actually allergic to the antibiotics. I had no oh. idea. So the first set of antibiotics that they gave me, I was allergic to, I got hives all over my body. I was literally like thought, thought I was going to go into, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis, yeah. Dude, anaphylaxis. Emily went into it last year off of penicillin. Yeah? It was so scary. Oh, my God. We had a, uh, Yeah, she went. She stopped breathing at school because she's a teacher. And David and I had to go pick her up off the, off the bathroom floor at the school, take her to the hospital. It was crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. She survived. Yeah. But um, luckily no, it wasn't. It's, it was yeah. pretty bad though. And the, the crazy thing is, is there was like, that wasn't the, the end of it. So then I go back and they give me a different prescription after they give me a shot of Benadryl to like, you know, deal with the, the reaction. And then the second one, I had an even worse reaction than the first one. And then, so then what doctor was this? I barely <laughs> get to Dr. Google, Massachusetts. Yeah, it's yeah. so great. What's going on over there? <laughs> but, uh, they're, all, anyways, they're all Celtics fans. So, <laughs> that's a disease in itself. Yeah. I go, I go back there, 
Um, I know this time I go to the, the Navy doctor. I said, fuck it. Cause I was, I didn't want to like, um, have to, like, I was, I was concerned that they were going to charge me this big bill, but since I'm a yeah. stabled vet, I'm supposed to have my medical stuff covered. Right. So I went to the, um, went to the Navy, um, a- ER and they uh, finally prescribed me a third one, um, which was like not amoxicillin, something like that. And it like I had a reaction to it, but it was it was mild to moderate. And I said, fuck it. I'm riding this out. I'm going to do the whole series of pills. And I so I like so for that whole week or two weeks or whatever it was, I was fucked up every day. I was itching. I had welts. It was bad. But I was like, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm I don't want to have to deal with, you know, Lyme disease later on down the road. I need to knock this shit out. So, so yeah, that's what I did. It sucked. So your advice is don't do medicine if you didn't grow up taking it. <laughs> or no, my <laughs> advice is like stay out of bushes in Massachusetts. Like fuck Massachusetts. Like <laughs> can't they get their shit together? You know, I don't know. One of those things. Have, have you been listening to a lot of Daryl Hall since? Daryl Hall? <laughs> I don't know who Daryl Hall is. Hall and Oates. Hall and oh. Oates, man. He he has Lyme disease, so that's what I was asking. Oh. Yes, he, Jim Miller has Lyme disease. Yeah. Ooh, Jim Miller he actively has Lyme disease, and I think he's. I think. You know, wait, Daryl Hall also actively has it. Yeah, but what? that's fucking Daryl. Like he's just playing the <laughs> power. It's a weird thing. So, like, in, in, you have learned like you, it never fully goes away. You're supposed to. Yeah. Not, it's supposed to kill. You're supposed to kill it off to such a degree that it doesn't like have as big of flare ups, but there will always be some mild flare ups if it gets to the stage where I was at. Like that's what the doctors told me. You're like, you're gonna have some minor issues with this when uh, you know later on in life. And I'm like, I'm already later on in life. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you ever hear of now? You ever hear of the YouTuber uh Mr. Ballin who does those like strange stories? Like they'll they'll be like either like murder stories or like strange mysterious kind of uh, stories have you ever heard of him um no but i i watched something like that so yeah. i've seen something like that so probably it's the same guy i was listening to one like i don't know maybe four months ago and it was of this woman who had lyme disease who moved out to california because she was dying and she's like she had completely like accepted that she was about to die and she's like on one of her like last walks before she's like about to literally throw in the towel and just go to bed and just say 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 her goodbyes kind of thing and she's on this walk and there's a a swarm of killer bees that surrounds her and they sting her and they all just keep stinging her and stinging her and stinging her. And I swear her Lyme disease disease just completely is cured. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. That's amazing. But this is also a YouTube story. (laughs) Dude, it's like, it's yeah, but, but, but I guess there was something in that, in the killer bees that in the, in the amount that they put in her of their poison just completely killed the Lyme disease off. Yeah, I guess I can see that. I can totally, see that. right? I mean, you think know, about how much they do. It's, I mean, that's all Lyme disease is, is like an insane number of bacteria. It's not and like use, one bacterium. It's like thousands yeah. of bacteria. And so, they use like, bees for so many things like that. Yeah. Well, you, the thing is, is you get adrenaline. Like you, right. that, I mean, the reason how you get out of anaphylaxis is you use adrenaline. And adrenaline yeah. is a key portion of your immune system. Yeah. So like, that's why, like, if you work out too hard, you'll get sick. A lot of times it's because you already had the cold or virus or whatever, but then you used all your adrenaline stores and then you're not able to fight off the virus. And then the virus takes over and then you get sick all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I can't believe I got sick from working out. And it's like, Oh, you were already sick. You didn't know you were sick and you were handling it. And then you decided I'm going to get rid of every single drop of adrenaline in my body by crushing, you know, this heavy bag or whatever. And, um, and then you're, you're fucked up. So Josh's well, wife is a top. Josh's wife is a top secret biologist, by the way. This is why he's so smart. Top secret? No, I actually no. I I I I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't want. I'm not. I'm not trying to brag or anything. This isn't a brag. brag. That's what this, this is. is. This is like okay. So this is just who I am. It's what I've had to deal with in a sense because yeah. I I never really like did any major contributions to life or anything. You know, <laughs> I, I I never did anything great in in a sense. Right. Um, right. Of course. Uh, 
Everybody agrees, right? We all agree. We we don't even know you, but we agree already. (laughs) We all agree on that. And, um, but no, when I was, when I was a kid, I, uh, I always scored 99th percentile in everything. And then when I went and took the PSAT math, I got a perfect score in 10th grade, which was like one, there's like probably like 10,000 people in the country that did that. And so I got uh, information from Caltech and MIT to go to their schools to go do some kind of science or something like that. When I, when I did my, when I got at my ASVAB to go into the Navy, I got a 99, a perfect score on that. When I went and did the nuclear test because I had flunked a bunch of classes in college because I crashed my car and I couldn't go to those classes anymore. And instead of dropping the classes, I just let them fucking go to failure. So instead of, instead of being responsible, I'm just totally not responsible. I'm a very self-destructive person. It's just in my nature. So anyway, (laughs) (laughs) beautiful. That was amazing. So anyways, I took the nuclear test and I got the highest score in the Southeast that's ever been seen in the Southeast. So like I'm just naturally gifted at learning things. And um, yeah, so when it comes to general understanding of like nature or science, I'm pretty good at it. That's why I'm able to get out with my like, you know, the... professor in physics wife who uh-huh. discovers gravitational waves and hangs out with all those people that do the same similar things. Well, my only question based off of everything you just said is how is a 99, a perfect score? No, no, you're true. <laughs> That's what got you. <laughs> Cause for some reason they don't give out a hundred and it's That's absurd. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. No, see like that's no, that's actually a really annoying thing for me. Okay, because on the PSAT, I didn't miss one question. Okay, but they lump me. They lump me with people that have missed one to two questions because that's still in the 99th percentile range. <laughs> they need to have 99.9 percentile range or something like that because it's fucking bullshit. I don't want to be through lumped. your story. Midway through your story, you said 99 perfect score, and I just go, this fucking liar. <laughs> That's why I said Van Halen lumped in from the guy from uh, who who wrote Fly from the Inside. You yeah. know, like they're not the same guitar level, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh Josh, do you still are you I know you were you were telling me you like you watched the first ever UFC live, which I think is pretty amazing. Way, I did way soon way sooner than I was into the UFC, but are you still into the UFC? Do you still keep up with? Oh yeah, I go to Buffalo fighters? Wild Wings almost every UFC, and really? I watch it there. Yeah, because I and I go by myself like a loser. But the thing nice. is, this this smart <laughs> loser always gets a seat at Buffalo Wild Wings because I don't have any dead weight that I need to like sit next to. So I nice. go and find my solitary seat at the bar. I eat like twenty dollars worth of food and I watch a sixty dollar show. And I enjoy good. myself because I don't have little kids screaming in the background. <laughs> well, and I can pop off as hard as I want without having to worry about waking up my kids or my wife. It's amazing. It's Get way- lit at the B Dubs. Oh, always at the B Dubs. You, if you if if you come to uh, the wherever I, wherever I live in Massachusetts and it's UFC night, not fight nights. A lot of times, fight nights are, aren't good enough. You know, like they don't they excite me enough. The you know, I'm not I'm not that big of a fan anymore. Yeah. But unless some of my guys, like someone I, I used to train with or I trained, if they're fighting, I'll go to, in the, regardless of what the main card is. Who are your you favorite know? people right now? Like who, who, who's somebody that would get you like excited to be if they're uh, on paper with you? You know them. You know, Pereira's for sure. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, fucking, I love Leon Edwards striking. Fucking love Dude. that. Um, yeah. He's so good. David uh, Tamer. David Tamer. <laughs> I do not know who David. Who is David? Way more. Nico Price. You know way more than I do. Who is David? <laughs> Nico Price. Yeah, that's a name. There you go. Yeah, I've seen like one. Yeah. Um, no, like uh, <laughs> any, any of the any title fight for sure. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, like the 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 Justin Gaethje Max Holloway fight. I mean, oh. I had to see that. I had to see that. That was the best um, thing ever. Yeah, oh, I, uh, I don't know. Like, my favorite fighters are all gone, though. That's the sad thing. It's like it, you, when you really have like a favorite fighter, it's hard to then get a new real favorite fighter. So, like, mm-hmm. my favorite fighters are all gone, uh, which is a sad thing. So, like, who were they? 
my original favorite fighter was Fedor Emelianenko because not because you know you could because you could have a gut you know you could have a gut and you could bang. He's showing his gut, dude. You could have a gut and you could crack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I I love watching him fight. I was like I was like oh I, I can see that. So basically every fat guy that's ever done yeah. well. So like big country. <laughs> Big country, Roy, Roy, Big Country. Uh, Daniel yeah. Cormier is my second best fighter. Fighter, that's the second. Yeah, best. He was my number one for a while. Oh, Sal, heart, yeah. bro, heart. Yeah, bro, Popeye's that's chicken. My, that's my boy. That's yeah. they call me White DC. That's what they I got call to me. talk to DC once, bro. Yeah. You should, it's the, dude, it's you the best. Slamming people, I slam the, anybody. You ask someone to get slammed, I'll slam them. Dude, there's, there's a, a clip of power Sal. Bomb? Huh? <laughs> I say power the power bomb. No question, Jared. No, no question. No, Where did that come no, from? Sal, no, no. like 170? Oh, no, my no, God. No, no. I'm, I'm not too... saying you're going to power slam Sal. I'm saying there's a clip 17. of Sal interviewing DC because oh. DC's doing this show like on his YouTube page from like two, three years ago, and he's taking questions from fans, and Sal gets to call in, and he's got a question for – what was your question, dude? It wasn't a question. It was I had to make a statement okay. and basically defend it against DC. So I was like, Kamara Usman. <laughs> Rain is not that great. Yeah, and I had to debate a two-time UFC <laughs> champion on why Dude, this guy and, stinks. And this and is like go well. it's the funniest thing in the world because DC I mean, that's is just true. that's not true. <laughs> Kamara Usman was amazing. Yeah, no, I, not amazing. I said his I said his resume. The group of guys that he beat, most of them weren't true welterweights. I had a whole I had a yeah. whole list of everything. Yeah, it was I, solid. I'm so, I'm so against the points. He beat Leon Edwards. So don't forget that. But yeah. he beat Leon Edwards mm, almost ten years ago now. Yeah, when he was more in his prime and Leon wasn't. That's yeah. is, that, what, that's not fair. But it's Dude, like yeah, so yeah, they moved around. Jo- they're close to each yeah. other. Josh, I'll have and you know that when Leon, he I'll have much- you know, no, no, when Where Leon he, he lost the second fight, out. biggest <laughs> yeah. lost. Yeah. Like he yeah. got he won four rounds and then lost the fight. Yeah, but what what the night you're talking about happens to be one of Sal and I's favorite nights of our entire yeah. life. It's an amazing night. No, no <laughs> doubt about it. it. No doubt about it. It was. I it, cried. It's, yeah. it's still not the most <laughs> you know what the most shocking thing I ever saw in, in while watching fights? Most what? shocking was um, Brennan Schaub in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one even like. I mean, he's funny now, and like it's funny to make fun of him now. But yeah, like, for sure. you know, he's just like some guy, you know, like some right. athletic. Because there weren't that many he beat Gabriel Gonzaga fights, heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. The, the no, the most shocking thing was Krokop versus uh, Gonzaga. When Gonzaga had, I watched that. I was at a Hooters in yeah. Florida, and I watched that shit. I fucking, I, I like, I didn't pop off. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I just like froze in place. I was Wait, like, what, what, that was his legs all fucking twisted. I was like, that just did not happen. Yeah. I, I was, don't know this one. W- walk me through it. What happened? Okay. So <laughs> Krokop is, um, are you joking? Okay. Krokop no, no, is, no, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Okay. Krokop was, um, uh, cause he's from Croatia. So that's, and he yeah, was yeah. like a special forces guy. So yeah. they call him Mirko Krokop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mirko Krokop. Um, but anyways, uh, he was just this insane kickboxer from K1, won a couple K1 tournaments, was just gnarly. And then when he went to MMA, he was he was just so strong, especially like uh, in his lower, his legs, in his back. Like he was really sh- good at deadlifts, basically. He was really strong. And he was uh, – all the guys that were wrestlers back then, they weren't chain wrestlers. They weren't like DC-level wrestlers. So yeah. after their first power double shot, it was it was it. That was all they had. So Krokop was this, uh, amazing, like the best sprawl and brawl. But he wasn't oh. sprawl and brawl. He was sprawl and kickbox you the fuck up. Because most yeah. of the kickboxers, the time, most of the kickboxers at that time couldn't defend a takedown at all. And Krokop was like, "Oh, I'm not only going to defend takedowns. I'm going to be one of the best in in the world at defending takedowns." And he did. He uh-huh. became one of the best. You look at his record. He has like there's only a few people ever to take him down. So, including uh, Fedor Milinenko, my favorite fighter. But anyways, uh, he started getting older and he moved to the UFC and he was really known for head kicks. Like he was the head kick monster. He was just uh-huh. like knocking people into comas, head kicks. Like he named one of his legs hospital and the other leg funeral. 
<laughs> because because that's where you would go after you got kicked with it. And it <laughs> yeah, was not yeah. a joke. Like he fucking destroyed people. And so um yeah, he came to the UFC and super known for being head kicker. And here comes he, this uh Brazilian uh black belt in jiu-jitsu, um uh uh, uh jiu-jitsu uh world champion in Ga- Gabriel Gonzaga. Um and Gonzaga was like kind of a thick guy, you know, he, he was still athletic, but he was more of a thick guy. So you don't uh-huh. expect like head kicks and like yeah. high tech shit from this guy. He, he, uh-huh. probably, he punches hard and probably low kicks hard. And yeah. then he's good at grappling. But this dude fucking head kicked Krokop and he had <laughs> so nasty, so nasty that when he, Krokop just fell straight down and his ankle and foot buckled underneath itself and he collapsed like an accordion on himself. It was the gnar, and he it like almost sprung him backwards because his <laughs> joint got to a point where it became a spring and like just moved his body over. But he was still completely uh, unconscious and collapsed. It was that. Were you watching then? Were you watching him uh, back then, Sal? Well, I don't think I w- I might have been like two. <laughs> no, but I know the history. <laughs> I've done my I've done my research. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Damn, that, I gotta check that out later. I'm gonna pull that up on the YouTube's later. That's not. And then Brendan Shaw beat. I think he beat Pro Cup too. Yeah, Brendan <laughs> Shaw. Yeah. Now that he was has a win over Pro Cup. Like the other yeah. one was disturbing, but then that one was just sad. We were like, yeah. "Oh, Pro Cup, just give it up now. Come on, bro." Yeah, this <laughs> guy. It's not fighting. No, you can't lose Brendan Shaw. Come on, bro. Gringo <laughs> Poppy. <laughs> all right well i i don't want to be that guy Dude, to cut it no short, you're good I, man you have to leave soon I, yeah uh, for sure oh Plus, that's it this is short <laughs> spot. this is a jr short bro. yeah JR, yeah please, bro this is this is we're not even like we're not cool like that yet it. i got so much more to talk about myself well, we'll, come, we'll do. We'll do another. We'll do another. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm right, we'll Sal and Jared and I will do the podcast for the rest of the time. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I just Jared, leave. you up for it? No. <laughs> okay. Damn. I feel. I, I feel so disappointed. Yeah. It's always it's All right, so hold on, hold on, I want to point this out. So we're basically ending in my storyline that I've trained some, and I think I'm really good and really smart at stuff, and then that's it. So I didn't get to talk about the actual fighters that I've trained. (laughs) Like the actual, like, have you heard of Montel Jackson? Yeah. Montel Jackson, I throw him out of the right hand. That guy, I taught how to throw a right hand. He knocks people down because I taught him how to. Okay. Montel Quick? Yeah, Montel Quick Jackson. That's right. Yeah. What about Samuel L. Jackson? No, I never trained with Samuel L. <laughs> Jackson. I do not know if he trains martial arts at all. He could. He, he you know, he was always about, in good shape. I don't know. What about Michael Jackson? Now, 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 I'm not taking he, he. credit. Hold on, I'm not taking credit for like all the things he's done at all whatsoever. No, right hand specifically. Straight, just the specifically when he was yeah. first learning how to strike. I was yeah. in the same classes with him, helping him to learn how to do it because he was a wrestler. He didn't know how to strike at all. He was just a wrestler. And so I taught him the fundamentals of how to throw a right hand. So the basics of like how to do it, I worked with him for like a couple hours. It wasn't even like like a, you know, like we worked on it for months or something. He was smart and he was good, good really good at uh, um, at learning. Uh, you know, t- he was very good. He's an insane athlete. So it yeah. didn't take long to teach him. But I, I was the guy that did it. So I, I get to say that, at least, you know. Well, who his, else? Most, who of else? His, <laughs> most of his strike, striking accolades and his, and his abilities comes from Solo Acosta. Solo Acosta is his main uh, striking coach and has been since he first started. And Solo Acosta is a, is a motherfucker. That dude is a great coach. And, um, and he's smart enough to know that I was g- good enough and smart enough to teach. So he was the guy that said, hey, Red Schaefer, have you ever heard of Red Schaefer? A jiu-jitsu uh, master Sounds from familiar. Wisconsin. He ran Wisconsin forever for like, you know, decades. 
and he became, he was a UFC fighter, uh, and he did good, but he didn't do great. You know, like he had some losses. He, he was, he didn't, it wasn't, his striking wasn't very good. He was an amazing grappler, but like he had very bad striking defense, especially. So he got blasted a lot and it was, you know, but anyways, um, so solo, I taught at Red Schaefer MMA. That's the first place I taught MMA. And solo was the one that was like, Josh knows what the fuck he's talking about. Give him classes, give him t- classes to teach. And that's when I started teaching MMA was them. So it was from the guy that teaches Monto Jackson and a bunch of other UFC fighters and Bellator fighters. That head coach was like, Josh knows so much that you should fucking get Josh to teach classes. And so I did. I taught a bunch. I taught spinning shit was my first fun class, which was on the weekend. It was a weekend class because I have a just gnarly spinning back fist. And I figured out how to like set it up really good and, and, and spinning back kicks too and, and heel kicks, wheel kicks. Because I started out with point karate, so I learned how to throw a spinning back kick when I was, you know, eight or nine years old. So it was something that was a part of um, my like fighting repertoire since I was, I was a kid. So, anyway, all right. Oh, yeah. I just no, wanted I cut- to point that out real quick. So. <laughs> no, dude, we'll we'll get you back on. Sal's just got to go train some Muay Thai. Yeah, it was just unfortunate timing, but my bad. I appreciate well, you coming on. No, you're Thank good, you. Man. Man. I don't want. I don't want to make your Muay Thai teacher upset. I'm. I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll do, right. we'll, uh, we'll do this again, man. This was fun. Yeah, it was. Good Thanks, Jerry. Good Thanks, Sal. Appreciate yeah, it. Sure, Talk bro. to you soon. We are so, out outro. Of we got the outro. Let's go. Oh. We got the outro. <laughs> Peace.